The review for the Brian's Genetic 5 pad is in. How does it compare to Brian's other pads? More importantly, how does it compare to its competitors? Stick around and I'll tell you what I think. guys I have now used every line of at least leg pad that Brian's makes so you know I've if you've seen my past reviews on some of their other stuff you know I've been like trying to really like what they do or their gear um, from afar I've liked the way the pads look you know I love the custom options uh, what you can do what you what you can make it look like um, so I've really been trying to get into a pair of leg pads that work for me from Brian's. So I'm just going to come out and say like my overall roughly what I think about it right now. And that is, unfortunately, uh, the genetic fives I still feel like just aren't for me with a caveat though. I think if I went custom with it, I think I could get them. You know, I don't know if it would beat out my Vons, but I think I could get them feeling pretty good if I went a custom route. Um, that being said, you know, a lot of the reviews I do are, I mean, there have been a few custom sets that I ordered, and I'm talking even aside from my Vons. Um, the Bauer Hyperlights were custom, although the build wasn't custom, it was mainly just the colors. And um, the, other than that, though, really the only other custom pad I got that was like a trial type of pad um, that actually like affected the build of it were the Lefave 12.1s. So mostly I review stock pads. And honestly, I feel like that probably has more value for the general viewers, uh, you guys, uh, just because most people probably get stock um, instead of custom. And, you know, with custom, it's kind of hard to, you know, like I'm if I review something that's custom, I mean, I got them cut that custom for me, it might not apply to you or whatever. So, you know, sometimes I do get custom, but uh, I feel in general, these reviews have more value just doing the stock ones. So once again, with these genetic fives, these are stock, but like I said, I, you know, ultimately they're still not for me per se, but I do think if I did some stock uh, change, I mean, some custom changes to a, I, I see potential in them. I see more potential in these pads than some of the other stock pads that I've used. Also, just because some of the other stock pads I've used just don't have the same options Brian's gives you. Um, but anyway, so that's just kind of my overall, I just want to get that out there up front. But beyond just kind of my own personal, you know, feeling towards it, uh, I want to give more just general info of how they performed, how they felt, while using them so uh, I will say that out of the three lines Brian currently uh, has out the heritage the optic 2 and these genetic fives I felt like if I had to use a Brian line it would be these I'm talking about just all of them stock I'm not even saying like having to customize anything um, these did feel the best out of the three lines to me um, as far as like comfort mainly is like what I look for. Uh, you know, I didn't really feel like I was fighting the pad like I, I felt with the Optic 2. Uh, I felt like the pad stayed on my leg better than like I had a problem with the Heritage pad staying on my leg. So some of these problems I had with the other lines, I didn't really have with these. It was just more that it's just a, still, a, even though it's supposed to be kind of their hybrid or whatever you want to call that line that some companies have style of pad, it's still just kind of too stiff for me. And that was just my main problem with it. But other than that, there was really nothing bad that the pad did or whatever. Um, it's just in general, I, it was just kind of like a whatever pad for me. Like just kind of in the middle of things. Like doesn't really stand out that much in any specific way compared to other brands. And in that case, it's a lot like uh, what I felt about Lefave or now that they're true when I did the 12.1 or 12.2 reviews. Um, 
I feel like it was it, it's a lot similar to that where it's just kind of this like safe in the middle zone where they're not doing anything crazy with the pad they're not like pushing the envelope as far as innovation technology necessarily i mean they are a modern pad i'm not saying it's like an old style pad but i don't know there's just nothing to me that i'm just gonna say oh it does this better than anything else you know it's just kind of like decent overall in basically everything but not doing any anything in particular like just great um so uh i would say like the main issue i had with it is again it's a stiffer pad than i would normally get and i went over this when i just did the like out of the box look at it um i talked about that especially in the thigh rise like how stiff it was and i mentioned that you know it has the break here but the uh the way that the knee landing and the calf landing interacts, like even just without you trying to bend it, it's already touching. So you trying to bend it, it doesn't, doesn't really do anything. So these pads do not flex really this way. So if you're looking for something that flexes this way, this pad stock is not gonna do that. However, there was something that I didn't really think about that the this brake does help with. Um, when I use the Optic 2s, I mentioned how, because the Optic 2s still kind of have a little bit of like a curve like you see here. And a big problem I had with the Optic 2s was how this was pressing against my thigh and especially any time, not so much when I was like in a crouch or something or just a generic butterfly, but if there was ever a time where I was trying to stretch my leg out, either standing straight up or trying to do like a split type of thing or just really needing to extend my leg, this would get pushed up against my uh, thigh and I really feel like I was fighting the pad. The one, the thing I noticed that this uh, actual brake does though, you know, most people think of brakes making the pad bend this way. It actually helps the pad like bend outwards and straighten up a bit. So when I did have to extend my leg or stand up straight or whatever, I didn't feel like I was fighting this pad uh, up at the thigh rise. This, this kind of flexed out. So in that way, this was more comfortable than uh, like the Optic 2s, for example. Um, I also feel like, you know, it's really, it's not, I don't have like a good way to scientifically quantify this. So a lot of it's just based on feel and, you know, that's very uh, open to interpretation or error or how you're feeling a certain day. So I, it's, it's really hard to compare like sliding to things because you can ask a hundred different people what pad slides the best and you get all kinds of different answers. But I just got to tell you like, how I felt when I was using it. So I do feel like these pads, for whatever reason, felt like they did slide a little better than the Heritage or the Optic 2s that I tried. Um, not really sure why they would slide that much better than the Optic 2s as they're a very similar build and the Optic 2s had the same uh, sliding surface material. The, the only thing I can think of is maybe it's just because these felt more comfortable on my leg and being that it was more comfortable, I was able to perform the sliding motion easier or better. And so that's why I felt like it slid better. So I don't know if it, I don't know if they really do slide better than like the Optic 2s, but I felt like they did when I used it. Not like a big difference at all, but if I had to say which one slid better, I felt like for whatever reason these slid a little better. But I just, I, I don't really know why, like I said, other than maybe because of the comfort factor, is that why it seemed like it slid better for me? Um, in general, I don't think, I mean, at Brian's, I feel like their pads slide fine, like no, whatever. I, I don't think they stand out in that regard necessarily. I think there's other other options that slide better, but I don't think they, I don't think, especially this this uh, brand uh, model, the uh, Genetic 5, I don't feel like it slides bad. I don't think you, have a, you would have a problem with it. It just doesn't necessarily like stand out at, to, for me at like the top sliding, one of the top sliding pads. Um, so, but that was, you know, something I felt was a little bit more positive with these Genetic 5 compared to uh, other Brian's lines that I've used. Um, that, you know, that being said, I feel like there's not a whole lot of difference if we're talking about stock pads between this and the Optic 2. And this is not just something, a Brian's issue. This is something that's really, I feel like is a trend in the whole industry. 
and it's something that I I think sucks. If you if you like stiff pads, or you like the kind of pad that this is or the Optic Two is, maybe you like it because it gives you I guess more options, even though they're all kind of the same pad. I don't know, but. I just don't understand like why offer two different lines when there's really not that much difference between the two other than maybe like a minor modification that could have been done from a custom order. Like to me, these are basically optic twos with a, uh, a single break here. The, the boot maybe is slightly more flexible than the, than the optic two. Although I wouldn't say this boot is like crazy flexible, like my Vons. Um, it might be slightly more flexible than the Optic 2s, but in general, these pads are not that different than the Optic 2s that I feel like it warrants a whole different line. Um, and I said the same thing about like when I was using True, I felt like their two lines are kind of similar. And um, I don't know, just in general in the industry, a lot of the, like Warrior even got rid of, of, they don't have two lines anymore. They used to have the RGT line and the just the ritual or, or the pro line, whatever. And now they're just going with the one line. It's cause they, I guess they smartened up and they're, they're the one brand that realized like, why are we putting out two lines that feel basically the same? So now they're basically just offering the one line, talking about where they're offering the one line, um, just with, they are offering more custom options with the new uh, G6 coming out. I've seen some of the custom options you can do and it's uh, more custom than Warrior has offered in the past. So to me, if, if you're not going to make a true, like soft, I, I hate saying hybrid, but I don't know what else you want to call it. Soft hybrid style pad. Um, why even have two lines? And really, this really does just feel like an optic two with a break below the knee and maybe a, a little bit of a softer boot. So, um, if you're in an Optic 2 and you were wondering about the Genetic 5, unless your issue really was the, the break, not having a break, I, you're, you're not really missing out or there's really not much difference. Um, I have heard, like I haven't used this line in the past, but I have heard from people who've used past genetic pads and now coming to this one, they also, they agree that this is very silly. Like Brian's, uh, stiffened up their genetic line. It used to be more of a true softer hybrid pad. Um, and they just stiffened it up because that's like how every pad, every line, every company's going. They, everybody just seems to want a stiff pad. Um, and it's funny though, the trend now though is stiff pad with a flexible boot. Whereas, I don't know, maybe it was like six years ago. I think everyone was still trying to push the, uh, steep stiff boot as the way to go so it's funny how like some things come back and go out of style and they come back again now that the flexible boot is back in style so maybe in a few years the flexible thigh rise or the flex or a more flexible paddle will come back in style but as of now i feel like there's really not a lot of stock options for guys like me who don't want a, a really stiff pad um you really have to go custom uh if you want that, I mean, even with Vaughn that I love so much, my Vaughn's, I mean, those are custom. That's not the stock V9 pad you would get. Um, I've never actually used the stock V9, but I have held them. I've, you know, kind of handled them, flexed them. And they are stiffer than mine. They're, I don't feel like they, I, I feel like I wouldn't find the stock V9 pad that great for me, to be honest. Um, the only reason why I, I went custom with Vaughn is because I've been using them for years and I trust them. And I figured if I went custom, uh, I would get what I want. Well, like their stock velocity pad used to be what I wanted up until I think the V8 was the first time that they started like stiffing it up more and you really had to go custom to get that older velocity feel. Um, so even with Vaughn, man, it's, you know, just everything is going, just stiffening the pad up. And I've said this in other videos, you know, I get it. I get that the majority of goalies now want that. But there is still a market for a different style pad. And like I said, even if you are just gonna disregard the softer pad and people who want that, why have two lines? I, I don't get it. Um, yeah, so uh, 
anyway, getting back to like more review specifically on this as opposed to my diatribe on the industry in general. Um, you know, another thing I liked about the pad is I like how thin it is. I mentioned that in my out of the box look at it, how that appealed to me, that how thin the thigh rise is. So that is one thing I do like um, because if you are going to have a stiff pad, at least make it thin because it's stiff and chunky is not a good combination. The thing's going to feel like a brick on your leg. Um, something that I didn't like about it was the uh, toe ties that these come with. So this is not the toe ties. These are my custom Kova toe ties that I put on. Um, the ones it comes with are just bungee toe ties. They have an, Brian's has their own name for it. They're bungee toe ties. Um, easiest way to put it. I did give those a try for about two skates, the first two skates, and they just weren't really working for me. I felt like the bungee didn't give as much as I wanted to. I felt like it was still kind of putting torque on my ankle more so than I care for. Um, so I switched to these Kova ones and I did like that, how these felt better. I felt like it gave a little more, my foot had a little more freedom with this. So personally, I don't care for their toe ties. You know, I've heard people say they do like it. That's just my view on it. How I, my experience with it is I did not care for their toe ties. So I, I put on my Kova ones, which I, for the most part, I'm trying to think, uh, I think the uh, true 12.2 pads were one of the only pads where their own toe ties felt good enough that I could use it. And just about any other pad I use, I, I end up going with the Kova. It feels better than whatever that pad comes with. So that was the case with these as well, that the I had to switch out to the Kovas. I didn't really care for their own toe ties. Um, another thing I would prefer is that their bootstrap was elastic. Um, bootstrap on my bonds are elastic. I've tried other pads that have elastic bootstraps and it's not a huge thing. It, it's not, it wasn't as big a deal as how the toe ties felt, but I do like to have a little bit of give if needed on the bootstrap. So this is an ideal for me, but it wasn't like a huge deal. But if I could change something on these, uh, I'm not even sure if they offer that custom, but I would prefer if the bootstrap was uh, elastic or gave a little, at least like maybe not the whole thing. Like I've seen bootstraps that are like kind of partly elastic, but just something that has a little give to it as opposed to this, but that's kind of nitpicking. It wasn't a huge deal. Um, let's see, like I said, you know, the sliding was, was pretty decent. Um, I can't really complain about the sliding. It just wasn't the best or anything like that. Uh, the rebounds on these, um, you know, they kick out pretty good. It's not like a Bauer but it's better than like Vaughn. And I would say it's even better than like uh, Lefebvre, True type of pad. Uh, so it does kick out the rebounds decently enough. Um, uh, another kind of problem I had with or something I would change if I was going custom is the strapping. So I, w I went over the strapping in the out of the box video. I'm not gonna really talk about it that much, but it's very simple. There's really only the knee strap, the calf strap, the, and then the bootstrap and the, the toe, toe ties. And that's even if you use that. Some people don't use the bootstrap and some people don't use the toe ties. So it's super simple strapping. Um, so on one, like it's easy to put on, it's very fast, but I didn't feel like, and, and I, you know, I felt this in, in other Brian's pad. I don't know, just in general, I don't like the way Brian's does their strapping. Um, I had a big problem with the heritage pads even staying on my leg. Like this like never happens to me, but when I use the heritage pads, like. I had an incident where the pad actually came off my leg and that had never happened to me before. It ha hasn't happened to me since. Um, and even beside, even if it wasn't necessarily coming completely off my leg, like I would be falling out of the knee stack. It just, it wasn't staying on my leg good with the way the strapping was on that. Um, with this, it's not that I was coming out of the knee stack, but the strapping just didn't hold it in place on my leg that well. Like, so it would ride up easy, really easily on my leg. Um, like when I'm sitting down putting the pad on, you know, it would be in the proper place for my knee. Like my knee was dead center, uh, just standing up. But once you start like moving around, going down the butterfly, doing different movements, actually going down the ice, the, I found the pad shifting up my leg a lot. Um, and then I would end up landing a lot of times at the lower end of the uh, knee, knee stack. And it, it didn't feel comfortable. 
Uh, like I said, it was never that it came off completely my leg or my leg completely landed outside of it, but if it, my knee was certainly landing lower than I'm comfortable with it landing on this. So a couple things that I would, maybe if I was buying these pads again, going custom, I would change is I would get the, they, ha they do offer a like professor strap thing. It's not stock, but you can get it as a custom add-on. And that was actually one of the things I did like on the Optic 2s that I, I had used. They were my friend's Optic 2s. And he had ordered the professor strap on it. Or I think it's not so much that he necessarily ordered it, but the place he ordered it from, they did their own like kind of custom version of it that they offered for sale at their store that came with the, the professor strap. And I think that does help. And if you've watched my past videos, you know in, for about 90% of the pads, I feel like they end up working better with a professor strap. It just anchors it to your leg better. And I so I think that would have helped maybe with this, uh, with the pad staying on my leg in a more specific area instead of sliding around or moving up and down a lot. That and or I would go down a size with these. So these were 34 plus ones. Uh, you know, like I said, just sitting down or just standing up, whatever, they seem like they were the proper size. It's just that when the pad starts moving up my leg, then it kind of turns into not the proper size, right? So, you know, I, I'd have to, I guess I'd have to see like how a professor strap, how, how much of a difference that would make if it would really make it stay at a certain position on my leg better, then maybe I wouldn't go down a size. But if I either wasn't going to use a professor strap or it didn't end up really uh, keeping the pad in place that much better, I'd probably have to go down to a 33 instead of a 34. That way, when the pad does move up, my, my knee would be about dead center in that then. Um, but like I've used 34 in Brian's in the past, like with the heritage pads, and that was a proper size. Um, you know, the Optic 2s I used were were 33s um and i had no issue with that and but again i think and then that used the professor strap though so like i don't know uh you know it's really hard to say without specifically trying these pads in a lower size or with the professor strap this, but these are just so i'm kind of just theorizing here but it's just the fact that with this stock setup that's an issue you might have where the pad starts riding up your leg so if you just absolutely have to go stock um and can't get like a professor strap on it or whatever you might want to go down to size with these um now i don't know how that compares to past brian's uh genetic sets um but like i'm, I'm a 34 in vaughn i'm a medium in bauer which is a 34 in true lefave i'm a 33 so um you know there's that uh Another thing that I think contributes to the pad kind of getting pushed up on my leg, besides just like the how simplified the strapping is, is the boot. Now, usually the flex on the boot will determine how much it pushes up the pad and the angle of the boot. So if you have a stiff, uh, steep angled boot, it's going to, I don't even know if I can really flex this out to be steep, but yeah. So if it was like this, right, it's more pushing it up. Whereas if it's flat, then the pad sits lower. So, you know, with these, the boot is pretty flat and it's, you know, somewhat flexible. So I really wasn't thinking that that was going to cause it to push up on my leg. And that really isn't what's causing it. However, there is something about the boot that I believe is causing it to, or part of the reason why it's pushing up my leg. And that is the actual, the length of the boot, which this is not anything that's come to my attention in other pads. It, I really never gave the boot length of a pad a second thought. I've never custom ordered like a, a different size or length boot. I've always just gone like, whatever the stock size i never even asked about like it's just it's something that's never been brought to my attention or across my mind the, the length of the boot the boot size but i don't know like i was just looking at it and i noticed that i don't know the boot just looked bigger somehow to me than other pads i've used uh, and it's not anything that ever stood out to me before when looking at other pads so i got the tape measure out 
And sure enough, well, the only other pad I have here to compare it to is the Vons. So I can't say how it compares to other brands that I've used at this point because I don't have those pads anymore. But I got the tape measure out and uh, yeah, this boot is an, about an inch longer than the boot on my Vons. So these, this is roughly eight inch boot and the boot on my Vons measured out to about seven inches. So how does that affect how it sits on your leg? Well, maybe if you didn't wear toe ties, it wouldn't affect it. But if you were some kind of toe tie system, you know, it's going to attach to the, the tip, of the, the end of the boot is always going to be where you tie it to the skate or the toe tie is. So if it's longer, now that's pushing it up the leg. I don't, I, I don't know if I'm explaining this <laughs> in a way you're going to understand, but hopefully you understand what I'm trying to say, right? So if the tip, if this is your boot, the end of your or the end of your skate and this is where you tie it if it was shorter right it would sit like this let's say the the boot ended an inch shorter like around here right so it would be it would be sitting here at, at the end of your skate but now that it's this length longer well that that extra inch has to go somewhere and if unless you either i guess loosen this more which i already keep it pretty loose or just don't wear a toe tie it's not gonna it's not gonna come out this way it's going to cause it to push more of the pad up. So if I was going custom, I guess I'd probably tell them to, to reduce the boot length by an inch. Uh, like I said, I, I can't say how that compares to a lot of the other pads at this point because it's not anything I ever thought I'd need to measure in the past with these reviews. Uh, but it definitely is longer than the stock on a V9, I can tell you that. Um, and you might want to measure if you're coming from another pad and you're interested in this pad You might want to measure the boot length on the current pad You're using if you do like the boot length and see how it compares uh, if it's about eight inches then you're fine If it's smaller though, you might have an issue with these and you might if you are gonna order custom that might be something to think about is telling them to uh, Do an inch less on the on the boot so You know for if, if we're keeping a, a tally of the, the things I would customize on this it's uh professor strap inch less on the boot probably you know without trying to just that set up and then going by size after that if i just had a pick i probably would just go just to be on the safe side go down to a 33 um so smaller inch smaller pad professor strap one inch less on the boot um and then also, like I've been saying about how this is a stiffer pad than I would use, if you go custom, you can customize that, much like with the with the Vons, you can do that. So stock, this comes with a one, three, four flex, meaning uh, at the thigh, it's a one, at the uh, knee, it's a three, and at the ankle, it's a four. The higher that number, the more flex. That's how Brian's does it. So one is means basically no flex, four is their most flexible, joint or whatever you want to call it so if i was going custom i would go at least a three at the thigh um maybe go a four at the knee i wouldn't mind that being a little more flexible and then well it's already a four at the boot so i nothing else i can do about that even though i wouldn't mind the boot being a little more flexible but whatever that's as flexible as it goes so this is what I'm talking about where I think it does have potential if I were to go custom and do all these changes, but that's a lot of changes. That's far from stock. So that's what I'm saying. Like, I just wish if you're gonna have two lines, make them different. Like I understand that most goalies want this certain style that these companies are going for, whatever, with the stiff, stiffer padding overall. But you already offer that in the optic too. So and, and with Brian's, they have three lines. They have the Heritage, the Optic 2, and the Genetic 4. I mean, I believe at this point, they're about the only, at least in the major brands, they're the only ones that have three different lines. Um, so to me, that's kind of crazy that you're just going to have uh, two, two pads that feel stock, at least, feel that much the same. Um, trying to think of what else I can say as far as like how they performed. Um, you know, they seal the ice good. They do, I mean, one thing about a stiff pad is it's going to keep its shape. It's going to be flat along the ice. Um, so no, no like seal problems. Like, you know, sliding decent. Uh, rebounds. Kicked it out a good amount. Like I said, not, not anything crazy, but 
rebounds were pretty good coming off as far as how far they came out. Uh, it's just, yeah, to me, it's just that, like, it's still just not that style of pad that I'm looking for and a minority of goalies are looking for still. I mean, yes, I admit it's a, it's a minority, but um, it's just, uh, I, I feel like, really, there is no stock pad out now that I could suggest to a goalie that has similar wants, needs, like myself, that I could say, you can just go out and get this stock. Uh, the funny thing is, actually, probably the, the one I would suggest if, if you're just going stock is the Bauer Hyperlite, which on the surface seems like a pretty stiff, stiff pad. It's just that for whatever reason, it ends up feeling pretty comfortable on your leg. Um, so, yeah, um, that's basically it. So, you know, it's not like it's a bad pad. That's not like there's really no really bad issues I had with it. It's more of a frustration from my perspective, as far as like these lines that are marketed as a certain type of pad, but they end up just all feeling the same. Um, which like I said, if you do like that style of pad, then I guess it's not an issue for you. Uh, but if you do like the stiff pad, I guess you probably just go with the optic too. Cause like, then you don't even have this break and it's even stiffer and yeah. Um, oh, another thing I want to talk about is like the weight of the pad, which I've never claimed was that huge a deal. Uh, I mean, there's been a couple pads where like they're so light that you really notice it. Um, but once the pads are on your legs and you just really, and your, your mind's not thinking about it, you're just playing. I don't think it makes that much difference because you're not like lifting your leg off the ice. You know, it wouldn't be like if you had a heavy ass glove that you're trying to raise up to catch pucks or something. I mean, the weight is on your feet, on your legs, on the ice. You're not lifting it up, whatever. So the, to me, weight isn't a big deal, but I will say these do feel, a, compared to other current pads, not in general, like compared to pa pads of the past, but like out, what's out there now, these are a little bit on the heavy side. Again, this is just kind of a feel thing, me just picking it up. I don't have a real good way to weigh the pads without the pad touching something. Like I have a small scale, but the pads are too big for me to really put it on and weigh it properly. But just going by feel, it's a little on the heavier side of, of the pads I've reviewed. But once I was on the ice, I didn't really notice it in the course of play. So I don't think that's a big deal, but I know some people want to know about the weight of the pad or whatever. So if you are interested in that, I mean, yeah, it feels a little heavier than some other pads, but I don't think it's a big deal. Um, the only other thing maybe I'll talk about is like the build quality craftsmanship. I mean, obviously when I try these pads out, it's not for that long of an extended period of time or anything. So you would think, yeah, this isn't going to be falling apart or anything coming wrong with it at this point, which it isn't. So, uh, but I don't know, sometimes you can look at a pad and think, and you can kind of see the way it's stitched, the way it's put together. It, it maybe looks a little off or looks cheap. Uh, this looks very well put together and that's something, I mean, Brian's has a long history of a good reputation of their quality, their craftsmanship. So that all seems very good. I've had no problems as you wouldn't expect to have a problem by this point with these pads. So like from that perspective, I, I have absolutely no complaints about that. And if you are going custom, you know, you could do crazy stuff uh, as far as graphics, colors, all that stuff, uh, which is why I really wanted to like some kind of Brian's pad. But just if I'm going by their stock pads, uh, yeah, there's just nothing that's going to make me want to want to switch from Vaughn or, you know, I would even like, like the Bauer Hyperlites. I like better than this. It feel better to me. Uh, these are very much like I was saying before, kind of on par with Lefebvre, True. <laughs> They kind of feel very similar to my experience I have with those pads where it's just kind of like, meh, you know, they're not bad at all and they have good craftsmanship, good quality, but there's just nothing about the pad that stands out as that great to me. And most importantly is just the comfort factor in me just because the style of the pad is not really what I'm looking for. And like I said, it just seems to be like all the same pad. <laughs> Everything is being, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It, it, like assimilated into like the same pad it seems like uh which i personally find very frustrating but i know i'm in the minority so whatever but um yeah so i don't really know what else to say uh you know I, I i definitely don't want this to come across like this is bad or whatever it's just 
not what I'm looking for. Um, but some of the things I'm saying that I don't like about it, it might be something you is a positive for you. So, you know, that's how I try to, to get at these reviews. And that's also why I, I kind of like reviewing a stock pad more so than a, a custom pad. Um, is because I'm trying to do more of a general review that the majority of people will get something out of as opposed to something so specific. But I also still have to talk about it coming from my own specific taste because it's kind of like a caveat, right? Like I'm saying, you know, I didn't feel comfortable, but that's because of my own preferences. Like it might not be an issue for you. If you find stiff pads comfortable, then it's not an issue at all for you. Um, but like I said, then if you want, if you like stiff pads, then why would you just go the Optic 2 or something? You know what I mean? Or like in my personal opinion, I think like Bauer Ultrasonic or the new Mach one now is is a better stiff pad, like uh, as far as performance, um, not as far as like craftsmanship or whatever. Um, so yeah, it's just, unfortunately just for me, the, the, the Bryans don't like stand out in any way. They don't super impress me in any way. They're just solid. They're just whatever. And that's kind of the same thing like I said, the same thing I said about the Fave True. Um, so yeah, uh, I feel like if you've been a Brian's guy, especially recently, uh, you, I guess you probably continue using them. I don't think you, I don't, like, I don't see anything, uh, that's going to make you all of a sudden not like Brian's if you're already a Brian's guy. It's more so maybe if you're coming from another pad, uh, like especially me, how I use the Vaughn Velocity and, and you're thinking maybe, cause this is kind of the competitor, right? Like the Velocity is their hybrid pad. This is supposed to be Brian's hybrid pad. I don't know. It might, it just might not be what you're looking for. If, if you're looking for that hybrid flexible pad, that's the only like kind of warning I'd want to put out there. Cause I do feel like that is a misconception based on their past genetic lines were more of that kind of pad. So I, I see a lot of people talking about the genetic five as being like, Oh, it's their flexible pad or whatever. And I'm like, eh, pump the brakes on that. It's, it's not, I, you know, it's not flexible. I mean, of course that word can be subjective. Was flexible or not flexible to me could be different than what you find flexible or not flexible. But I would not call these like flexible pads or whatever to me at least. Um, so just, that would be like the main point is just be aware of that. If, if you are looking for those pads, that type of pad, this is kind of apparently a departure from past genetic lines. But um, yeah. If for whatever reason, I guess you were in an optic and maybe you you wanted it slightly less stiff. I guess you could go this instead of doing a custom. You could just use the genetic fives. But yeah, just not much of a difference in my opinion. Um, uh, think I can't think of anything else that stands out to me that I want to say about these. So... I guess I'm just going to end the video here. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. And also, again, as always, if you have any questions, leave a comment. I'm always happy to talk to people. Uh, if you see me in a Facebook group outside of YouTube or whatever, feel free to message me. Um, I'm always happy to talk to people about gear. I talk to people about gear all the time. They're always like, oh, I'm sorry to bother you. I'm like, no, dude, you, I, I can talk about Goalie Gear all day. I really don't mind. So by all means, if you have any questions, you know, a lot of these reviews and stuff is just train of thought off the top of my head. So there could be things I'm missing. I don't know. I, I don't can't think of anything right now, but by all means, don't hesitate to ask me anything or whatever about these pads and I'll be happy to answer you. But other than that, we're just going to end the video here and uh, I'll see you next time.